I'd like to welcome everybody to our VTS presentation today. We're going to give you a little bit of an introduction into the GM accelerator pedal position sensor systems that are on some of your earlier model and later model uh, GM vehicle applications. My name is Steve Garrett, and this is going to be an introduction to show you how these systems function and what is different from one system to another system when it comes to diagnostics. You've heard the term throttle actuator control or TAC system for several years now. These systems were actually introduced starting clear back in 1994 on the 6.5 EFI diesel. The first gas car to get it was the 1997 Corvette, which is the Y car with the 5.7. By 2004, the vast majority of vehicles that were, were produced by General Motors had a TAC system. Uh, pretty well everything has got it nowadays. Uh, that system itself has stayed pretty well as we're going to present it here today. Uh, your wiring, harness, uh, configurations, and so forth may be a little bit different depending on what year you're working on, but for the most part, most of this information itself is pertinent even today. There have been some updates into the throttle body portion of it itself uh, in later model applications, but again, the functionality of this system is pretty similar to what we're going to discuss here today. Why do we have a tack system on your car? Uh, basically, this system gets rid of the throttle cable and it gives us electronic control of your throttle. That obviously has a lot of advantage uh, over a throttle cable itself from the liability aspect of having a problem versus obviously having emissions and, and fuel economy gains uh, with simply going to this system itself. Now, when you look at the APP system, you're going to find it consists of a number of different things. Uh, you're going to find an accelerator pedal that in turn no longer has a cable attached to it, has a module or a housing that contains the potentiometers built into it that's connected actually to your gas pedal of your vehicle itself. Out on the engine side, instead of a cable going to the throttle plates, you've got an electronic motor that's at the throttle plates, and there will also be a couple sensors out there to tell us the position of the throttle plates. So in this instance, as you can see, there are different applications or different uh, layouts for your vehicle application itself. Some have three potentiometers uh, with all three sensors being used at the APP, and some have three potentiometers built into the APP, but they only use two of them. Pretty well everything has two throttle position sensors out at the throttle body itself, but how those throttle position sensors work is going to vary depending on what your vehicle application is. So this is a look at a typical APP assembly itself. So as you can see, your accelerator pedal is showing shown there on the right, an electrical connection, as you can see, we're going to plug all this stuff into the electronics of the vehicle, is there in the upper left-hand corner of the picture. This is a look at the 6.5 diesel, which was the first unit to actually go to uh, drive-by-wire applications here. As you can see, this one uses three potentiometers built into that APP style unit. We call it a type one sensor wiring, where it has actually all three of them feeding directly into the PCM to tell us what position you've actually uh, attained with the throttle. Now, as you can see here on these early model units, what they basically did was they wanted each different potentiometer uh, to have a different value. The reason they did that is for diagnostics. Everybody was a little gun shy back here uh, when we were doing this, and what it boiled down to, they didn't want to have any runaway vehicles. So they wanted to be able to set trouble codes very easily uh, if there was a problem. So as you can see, each sensor has a different uh, voltage delta or curve, uh, depending on what you do with the throttle opening. So as you can look at right here, we're showing a Duramax. As you can see here, the Duramax is a little bit different compared to the 6.5 diesel. APP1, APP2, and APP3, these are the three potentiometers inside of your pedal uh, position sensor itself. At idle, as you can see, APP1 has only about 0.7 volts, APP2 is 4.3, and APP3 is 4.0. As you can see, as we step on the gas pedal, APP1 rises, APP2 drops, and APP3 also drops, but not at the rate that obviously APP2 does. On your gas applications, you've got different configurations on your gas applications. Some of them use a direct input on later vehicles to the PCM. Some use a TAC module, and then the TAC module sends the signal onto the TCM and the PCM. 
So in this instance, we're showing what we would call a type one unit, which has a standalone TAC module, throttle actuator control module. So your APP input goes directly into the TAC module. The TAC module then obviously looks at what that input in is and then sends a signal over your throttle angle circuit itself to the TCM. And of course that then sends it on to the uh, TCM. So we feed from the TAC module to the PCM, PCM over the data bus obviously to the TCM. So as I talked about earlier, you're gonna have three sensors on the inside of that throttle pod. Uh, for the most part. Now, later Model 1s, they don't, but the early Model 1s, they do. But the software may only use two of those sensors. This was kind of an interim change that they had done on these systems, where you'd actually find there's three sensors, but only two of them are physically functional. So here we're showing you what it looks like. Obviously, the uh, pad assembly itself, or the, the uh, APP system itself, in this instance, as you can see here, this has only got two sensors built into this one. This was the first car, the Pontiac GTO, was the first car that actually changed from three sensors to two sensors. So with this type of wiring, as you can see, we're a direct input to the ECM. So as you look at that picture on the right-hand side, you can see we got two potentiometers, and those are an input directly to the TCM or the PCM itself. And then the, the uh, engine control module then outputs a command for your throttle actuator control motor. That's, of course, at the throttle body. So we're going to control the high side and the low side of that motor because that motor is a bi-directional motor to control the position of your throttle plates. Those other sensors you see on the left-hand side, which are called throttle position sensors, they're mounted at the throttle body also, and that tells us where the throttle plates actually went. So we're going to command the throttle actuator control motor to move the throttle plate and then look at the throttle position sensor to make sure that those sensors show us that the plate moved where it was supposed to move to. Now, that is separate, as you can see, of the uh, input that come from your APP module. So your APP module is simply feeding an input to your engine control module, and then the engine control module figures out what to do with that, and it commands your throttle actuator control to do its job. So as you can see, here we're looking at this two wire set setup that we've got at the APP. Uh, as you can see, both of them are starting low and both of them are going up in voltage value as you step on the gas. So there's again, a lot of different configurations that you're gonna run into. We got three separate configurations. Some of these vehicles use a separate throttle actuator control module. That means that your APP system the APP sensor on your accelerator pedal feeds to a throttle actuator control module, and then that module then signals the other modules in the car about what throttle opening is. Some of the applications, the TAC module and the throttle body are combined into one unit, so everything is one piece, with no separate TAC module being used. So what it boils down to is there's different configurations depending on what kind of vehicle you're actually looking at. All of them basically function the same way. You're gonna to have to have some sort of throttle input, which is gonna come off the accelerator pedal position sensor or APP. It's then gonna command uh, the TAC motor to do something, open or close, based on what your throttle opening command was. It then looks at the voltage that comes off the throttle position sensors on the throttle plates to tell us when we have achieved the throttle opening that we have desired. So this is a look at how the separate uh, TAC module would basically be laid out in the vehicle. This happens to be a, 20, oh, or a 2005 CK truck, so a Silverado uh, Sierra truck. Again, they had a standalone module. This is a look at a W car, which would be like a Grand Prix type car, a uh, Regal. Uh, as you can see there, the TAC module and the motor assembly are one assembly on this. So your APP input goes directly to the throttle plates and all the electronics are built into the throttle plates themselves. That also includes the two throttle position sensors to tell us where the throttle plates went. So here shows you an XLR. This would be the same as a Corvette. As you can see, the pedal assembly is a direct input to the engine control module and the engine control module then controls the throttle body. There are four different brands of these motor assemblies that are used by General Motors. Lots of different versions of them. They're gonna look a little bit different, but they're fairly similar as far as operations are concerned. Uh, Bi-directional control, 
They're pulse width modulated or frequency modulated as far as the motor's concerned, and they have a spring-loaded throttle plate. Do not get your finger in the throttle plate. When you turn the key on, it's going to close the plate on you, and you do not want your finger obviously in there. This shows you one of the different versions. This is a Siemens version, so again, it looks a little bit different, but the functionality of this throttle plate is basically the same. This is a Pierberg design, okay? An Hitachi design. And a Delphi design. So depending on what vehicle you're going to have or you're going to work with, you're going to have different designs. But again, the functionality is basically the same. Your TP sensors, remember, are mounted out at the throttle plates themselves. That's an input to tell us where did the throttle plates move to. Well, you got a command uh, that we're obviously developing based on how hard I'm stepping on the gas pedal. And then we're going to respond by controlling the throttle plates. As we move the throttle plates, did we get the plates to where they were supposed to go, to our desired position? Well, that's going to be picked up from a set of TP sensors that are mounted on the throttle body. Now, as you can see, there's different, uh, obviously, voltage outputs depending on the design that you actually have, which type of APP system you're running. One other thing to keep in mind, starting in later applications, they did completely away with these voltage inputs that you're going to see. On these older ones, you could actually monitor the voltage not only in your scan tool, but you could also back probe those TP sensors and see if, in fact, the voltage was doing what it's supposed to do. You can no longer do that because they're now serial data output. So we're going to feed, obviously, power to that APP uh, motor and TP sensor circuit itself. And through the wonders of modern electronics, we convert that value as an output over to serial data. And serial data is going to feed it back to the module. You'll still see it as voltage on your scan tool, but if you were to back probe that circuit, you would not see voltage there as you would in this picture that you're seeing right here. So keep that in mind. It cannot be tested the way these old systems were tested. So here's a look at the uh, TP circuit itself and how that TP circuit and the motor assembly works. This happens to be a V8 that you're looking at right here. So you have an actuator motor that's controlling the throttle plate. And then again, you're going to have a position sensor that's telling us where did the throttle plate move to, what positions it's actually in. Now, when it comes to diagnostics, there's a bunch of default actions that we're going to have uh, that you should definitely be aware of. If you have a problem, which again, problems are quite common with these applications, you can most likely have some sort of default action that you're going to be dealing with with the customer. The customer doesn't know anything other than he may be operating in reduced power mode. He may have some lights on in the dash of the car. You get it in for service. Most likely, you're going to find some trouble code set. There will also be a re relearn process. So, we're saying once per key cycle, it does basically a quick throttle return spring check. So what it boils down to is it's going to physically relearn if I, in fact, meet those parameters we're showing you right there. So again, you're going to have a counter that's going to be displayed, obviously, on your scan tool. That counter is going to show you different numbers depending on, obviously, when the throttle relearn process has started and when it's been completed. You're also going to have some different default actions uh, that can occur, occur with these systems themselves if there's a problem. It can limit your acceleration. It can limit the throttle opening. It can have throttle defaults where it turns everything off and closes it and forces it to idle. Uh, it can even cause engine shutdown issues. So a lot of different things, a lot of different symptoms the customer may have that can be related to uh, default actions with this. A good example of this. And this is not actually default, it's programmed into it. Your new Duramax applications put out so much torque that they cannot allow the engine to, to obviously put 1,000 foot-pounds of torque into the transmission during launch. So they'll actually back the torque of the motor down, uh, and they're doing that via this system right here. So what it boils down to is you, you're limited to like 75% torque at launch. Again, simply try to keep the transmission in one piece. So there's a lot of different modes of operation for these systems depending on which application you're working with. We got two reduced power modes for most of the systems themselves. Mode one, APP and TP sensor uh, uh, fault triggers, a reduced power mode, where we're going to limit your mile per hour. Mode two, we're going to obviously uh, limit or change the throttle position. As you can see, this is for a return spring default action itself. It's going to limit your RPM, 
and it's also gonna control injectors. So it's gonna force a misfire to occur and it's gonna turn on obviously a reduced power light uh, to try to tell you there's something wrong. And either of these modes, good chance you're gonna have some DTCs that are gonna be set. This is a listing, the next few pages, showing you all the different DTCs that you're gonna run across. The highlighted area in blue is gonna be the DTC number and everything else that you're seeing there is gonna be what it does it take to actually set the code. So again, if we got a quote code P1220, uh, we cannot have obviously uh, P1517 or P1518 set. Ignition's gotta be in the run position and your TP value's gotta be off in the weeds here somewhere as compared to what they're supposed to be uh, and that's gonna set the trouble code. So we've given you a list of all the different codes that are available for these different uh, APP systems. So here's another list of some more additional trouble codes, followed by some additional trouble codes that you may run into. So again, why do we include this with this? Because if you understand what it's looking at to set the trouble code, you can figure out why did the code set. So that's probably the most important information uh, because you can't just blindly follow a trouble tree anymore because it can get you into trouble. So again, type two systems, what kind of trouble codes you're gonna see with them. Some more type two trouble codes. And one thing to keep in mind, uh, there was a change that was done. As you can see, we changed obviously uh, uh, the meaning of what you're seeing there as far as uh, uh, the diagnostic itself. Well, that concludes our presentation for the day. Thank you very much for attending. See you at the next VTS Solutions training session.